this up, people. Hi. <clears throat> Before in the other tutorial, <clears throat> well, first let me say how is everybody today. I hope you guys are doing fine. I'm doing okay. Everything is kind of not worth talking about, but <laughs> if I did, you would probably want to hang yourself. So <laughs> I got 99 problems, but Doss ain't one. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> All right, so that's where I take this drink of soda. I would like to say. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at the the tacos, the tacos thing that we did. <clears throat> All right. So if you remember, well, we ran the tacos thing, right? I had to type this all out because we ran it in a debugger. I didn't get any source code out, so I just made one real quick. Um. So I ask you tacos, tacos? Sure. All right. You hit yes. It says yes, man. All right. And it shows your key press. Okay. And if you run tacos again, you say tacos. You put in no, no, no way. I'm nuts because nobody likes tacos. Are you crazy? How about if we hit P? Well, it still says P. No way, you're nuts. Okay. Dir clear. Now I want to edit this file. I want to edit this if state .sm. <clears throat> this is an if statement. Okay. The if statement is like right here. Okay. And um, no matter what you type in, as you saw when we typed in P, you could type in capital Y, everything else like that. Blah blah blah. Because capital Y and regular Y are not 79. Anything that you type in here that is not equal to 79 is going to give you the no way you're nuts. Okay? So if you type in something, um, like I said, if you type in anything else besides 79 or hex Y, it's going to say you're nuts. And why do I say this is an if statement? Okay, well, you read these lines of code. Okay? We move our string, move our bytes in, in 21, execute that. So that's done. Move into AX register to show the key press. Okay? Um, so that's done. Now it jumps into this. And this is the if statement. Alright? And maybe can you say these are the parameters or these are the conditions of the if statement, okay? So it's gonna hit there and it's gonna say if if or compare if AL equals 79, do this. And if it's not equal, do this. Okay, so this is our switch. This is our if statement. <coughs> Alright? That's how that goes. Nothing really much more to talk about that, but we can debug this. We'll say um, debug tacos.com. And I want to let's unassemble and take another look at it. Okay, well let's let's look at it from a register type of point of view. Okay, let's let's watch exactly what's being loaded in here and everything else. Okay, so we move it into AH. <coughs> Remember, use our T to show the next instruction. AX was empty. Now A AX has the value of 9 in the AH register. Everything else but C is where it's supposed to be. Maybe C is, no, I don't think C is supposed to be there. Okay. We see here now, <coughs> our next command was to throw in our string. We did that. The next command was, ooh, this got a little complicated here. This got into 124. Okay. Now, what happened was with 124, this is going to exit when I do that again. <clears throat> this got loaded in here to our um, our AH register. Okay. Now AH just had the value for what um, for show string into it. Okay. Now after I executed this stuff from above it. Okay. And it's not going to show me my move A move a move the single press and hold key press in there but this value got changed okay and then here it got changed back here okay so I like to talk about what changes in your processor and values and whatnot that are that get changed in your processor okay so that's what I would like to do right now so let's clear it up let's say dir Okay. And these values and these things that change in values, it's very important to talk about because today I'm going to talk about something called handlers. And what they are, are is pretty cool. But you have to deal with them. Okay, you, that's exactly what you have to do is handle them. Okay? So, hmm. What I want to do is I want to show you, I want to show you first let's create a folder. 
no need to go ahead and type in make directory, especially for the video. <laughs> I like long videos. So let's go into CD into tomorrow. Dur. It's clear. Dur. Okay. Now let's us. Let's see. We'll keep the if statement. We're going to make a folder. Let's say debug. Make it right from the terminal. And we'll say assemble address 100. Now we want to say jump. Let's jump to address 120. And under here, let's put our bytes. Define bytes on this folder. Okay. Standard in, so it's a null terminator. We'll move our assembler out to 120, and now we'll start creating a folder. Move into AH, the opcode for folder, which is 39. Move into DX, the opcode, or the string, which is at 102. Okay, that's the name of the folder. Um, also, too, let's move into CL, the CL register 0 for a normal folder. So int 21, int 20, and let's um, give it some memory. We'll say hex, let's count it down to be 0. To B is where I left off. I started at 100. RCX will give it two Bravo bytes. I think that's right. Okay, name it fmake.com. Write it. Okay, and quit. Durr. So fmake is there. Let's run fmake. Durr. Okay, there's our new folder. This fold. Right? Yes. Yes. It, yes, it is true. You know what? How about move? Let's move this fold to if state. Okay. Mm. Durr. Oh, me. Okay, if state. Okay. Okay, that worked. So now let's move. Let's move. Move if state dot asm if state directory dir. okay just trying to clean stuff up a little bit in here and then let's do a fmake again and we're going to make um, we're going to move this folder to taco no that's not it I want to move tacos in if state move taco dot com to if state okay sure clear Right. <clears throat> so this folder here, we created the folder. Now I'm going to show you about writing into the folder, and writing into the folder deals with something. It deals with something called a handler, and a handler is very important to know about because it, a handler is essentially a return value that you get back when you do several things that need to hold a place in memory. So I'm going to do this off screen. Clear. Got some notes got some notes and just to make stuff so it's not so crazy if everything's crazy enough <laughs> say clear dir um let's see the into this folder okay dir clear and in here i'm let's pull up an editor we're going to edit this and we're going to call uh make you know what we need to do first we need to make a file first that's what we need to do. Okay? Okay. What? I'll show you that. Sure, right now. Why do it from the scripter? Let's go right into the debug. Sure? Sure. Um. CD. My. Ugh. Right file. Okay? And what we're going to do is. Uh, the only thing, like I said, the only thing you have to remember is with opcodes. So, file make dot asm. Let's say that. Alright, I'm just going to do it from the debugger, but let's do it from here. So everybody can see what's going on. Alright, set up our environment here. We've got RCX. Let's give it 300 bytes. Name it, um, file make. Or, yeah, file maker dot com. Right. Now, uh, basically, how easy is it to create a file? Well, it's pretty easy to create a folder. First, we have to just jump right in it. <laughs> we'll say move ah. Um, the opcode for a file is 3c. Okay? Opcode file. Okay? And then we have to tell it what name of the file do we want to make it at. So at address 2.0. 
200. Let's say name of file and um, let's scoot that down and let's let's give it this parameter. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but it's, I think it's always good to do this. We're going to say type of file. Okay. <clears throat> so it's going to be a regular text file. 3C facilitates that. Let's say int 21. Give it some bytes. We're we'll say address 200. We're we'll say define bytes. We're gonna name it. Well, man, what are we gonna name it? Um, to create a file, my file. Txt. And do not forget our null terminators. No null terminators. This thing it just won't work. All right. Okay. So now let's run this through the debugger. And we'll see if we have it. Um, file me to ASM, sure. Okay, I don't see any errors. I don't know about you guys. We'll say dir, clear. Let's do file me to ASM. ASM, no, no, file me .com. What happened? Okay, my file.txt. Let's edit that. And you'll see it contains nothing. Super. I could write to it, but no way. I just screw stuff up. Dir. Dur. Now, let's say this folder, we made our file. <coughs> okay. Now, let's pull open an editor again. And this time we're going to say writer. We're going to show you how to write into a file. Dot ASM. Okay. Set it up. Um, we'll say RCX. Another 300 is fine. Name it F write. Okay, uh, right, and let's say quit. Okay. <clears throat> so, there's a couple different things that we need to take into account when writing to a file. Now, <clears throat> a simple task that we do, may, we may take for granted in certain situations. <clears throat> for instance, breathing. We take breathing for granted and that we really don't give too much thought into it. And if you put enough thought into it, you might just drive yourself insane. Alright? So, basically what we have to do is, we have to think about the fundamental things that go into everyday mundane processes that we do. Like for instance, making a file. Okay? Normally people who like to use mice, just click on it and say click, right click, make, everything else like that. We don't have that luxury because we're so deep inside the operating system. That's what makes us cooler than everybody else. So what I like to do is kind of throw out here in a comment area about how I would like to go about doing this thing. Okay? So first, we do need to make a file. Okay? Or we need to print or write to a file. That's our ultimate goal. To a file. Okay? Okay. But how are we going to go ahead about and doing that? <coughs> Some things are, um, there are some things that are, what do you call it, into, intuitive. There's some things intuitive about creating a file, writing to a file, and there's some things that just are not. Just as breathing. When you inhale the air, your diaphragm goes down, you suck in air, after you get the signal from your brain, okay, and then your brain gives off the signal again then to expel. So all these things happen, you know, without us even thinking about it. So... If you think about writing to a file, think of writing to a file just like a book. Every book or every directory is already closed or every file is already closed. So the first thing I would like to do is let's just open. Open the file. Okay? And then, okay, then we write to file. Alright? <coughs> well, this is not intuitive. And we have to say open for writing. Okay? I know I spelled that wrong. Alright. And then we have to um, naturally what file do we want to write to? So let's say also to um, name of file. Okay. And then we actually have to write to the file. Alright, so well let's start off with that. Let's start off with that. So first we have to figure out how to open a file. Okay. And I'll cheat for you and we'll say move into AH 
the opcode to open a file is 3D. Okay? In order for you to write to a file, it must be open. Okay, so 3D is the opcode to open a file. Let me give you... Let me say opcode to open a file. Okay? And now we have to do something kind of non-intuitive and tell it... Um, we have to open it for writing. Okay? And that value, AL, value 1, or open for writing, gets stored in the AL register. Okay? <clears throat> now we have to say something like uh, the name of the file to write to. So we'll say move into DX, and this is kind of easy for us because we've figured out how to name stuff before and tell it, give names memory addresses. So that's a little different. Uh, and as we go, let's assemble at 200. Define bytes. What file is it called? Ooh, I forget. My file.txt. I bet you it wasn't. I bet you it wasn't. I bet you we'll get an error. Let me go check. Yes, I want to save it. Crazy? Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay. So now that that's done, we'll move this stuff. Yeah, we can move this down a little bit. Get this out of the way. Okay? So this is the name of the file we want to write to. Um, and actually to write the file. Okay. Well, opening files and writing to files in DOS is two totally different things. Okay? So right now, we have this, we have a name, we have everything else like that. Okay? So, naturally we can say something maybe like int21 to execute that. Okay? This is two two-step operation with DOS. Okay? It's not very intuitive. Okay? So, <clears throat> now that we have those values logged, okay, or those values down, now we actually want to say write to file. Move into the AH register um, 40 is to write to file. I should have took that from above. Write to, to file. Okay. No, cut that out. But we have a problem here. Alright, we have a small problem. AH is occupied by 3D. If we move a, uh, 40 into AH, uh, we're going to get a problem. Okay? We are going to get a problem. And the problem is, is that we get a handler back. When these two values are inputted, okay, when these two values, AH and 3D, when we open files, and um, when we open files, we get handlers. Alright? <clears throat> and handles have to do exactly that. They had to be handled. Okay? So, what I like to do is, and it's not really a, um, um, a requirement, but I like to first, I'm going to move my handler, which is going to be, I'll show you. I would like to move, I would like to clear space for my handler. Where I'm going to put the handler is going to be in the SI register. Now, we haven't used this yet. I think this is called the special register, special instruction register, okay? Similar to the DX register, it's a pretty big register. and can handle big stuff or handle things, okay? But instead of putting the handler in a BX and CX, or obviously DX we can't use because we already have that there, I'm going to put it in the SI register, okay? So before I do that, I like to personally zero out the FY, S, SI register. Zero out ridge. Because I don't know if you remember or not when we were doing our um, thing, we always looked at the CX register, especially when we were doing our Hello Taco, and it always had something in it. Alright? Well, I, I don't want something to be in my SI register. Because I don't know what that value is, I don't know what it does. So now that we have it and we moved it out of the, or we zeroed it out, we have to, we still have to move this value that we get back. And we're going to put it in the SI register. Okay? So whatever value gets here, this is going to return a handler. Whatever these two, whatever these come up with, when you stick them in into the AX register, because this is, after all, a L and AH, they are the AX register, we have to move that out of the way. So I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to temporarily store it in the SI register. Now my AX register is open, so I can put my values AH. Uh, I can put my value 40 into A8, and that value is right to file. Okay? Okay. So, w and then when you write to a file, you have to tell it something like how many bytes. Okay? Okay. 
And it's really not that complicated if you think about it, and you know that computers are complicated. But when you think about it, and you've been around computers for a while, well, you figure that <clears throat> they are a little complicated, so they will require more steps than we even... Um, if we put a little brain power into it, we can think of the steps that they come up with. We can't think of the op codes that they come up with. But, you know, if we, if we actually sat back and we thought, what does it take to actually breathe? You know what I mean? And and wh where does it start? Does it start with a signal? What are the actual functions? Alright, so, it's not that bad. Um, we want to write into the CL register. This is how many bytes? How many bytes? We're going to write 10 bytes. And, of course, now... Now that we're on a roll, what bites? <laughs> what bites? What bites? Okay. And this is going to be address for the bites that we want to write. Okay. So let's go down to the A. Let's go down to our assembler. We're going to move it to A220. Um, define bytes. What do we want to write? Let's write I. Um, bubbles. No, that's dumb. That's gay. That's right. What the hell? Okay. And now because it's standard in... Ooh. Good thing, huh? It is a string. Think about this. This is a good thing to point out, I do believe. There, Squire. I think it's, it's pretty important to point this out. <clears throat> now, we wrote a string. We are writing a string. Why are we using a null terminator for a string? Okay, it's standard in. All right, this is not coming to the screen. It's going, it's going right into the file. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of good to run across and point that out. Now we need to move, or we did all that. Let's say int 21 to execute the above, and int 20 to kill the program. Okay. Okay. So oh. But we still have, we still have the handler in place. We have to put that handler somewhere so it can dump out. Okay? What I like to do is, what I like to do is, at the very end, I would like to just dump out the contents of my handler. I'm going to put it somewhere. I'm going to say, I'm going to put it in the BX register. Alright? Con the, the handler is here. Okay? The handler gets moved to the SI register. Then the SI register dumps it out to the BX. And N21 executes all the above, N20 ends it. Okay? Now, the reason why <coughs> I just don't dump it straight out of the SI register is I'm not sure it can actually dump out from the SI register. I have a BX register open, so why not just move it into there? Because I know that these top major four registers can, can um, access data very fast and dump them out. And I'm pretty sure you can dump them out on the other registers too, but that's the way I like to do it with a small file like this. Now, I would say Control Alt Tab. Let's say that. Let's save it. Let's debug it and see if it works. Debug. Um, uh, debug. Debug writer. Dot ASM. All right. I don't see no errors. I'm gonna say clear. Now I'm gonna run. Um, what was it? Fwrite.com. Fwrite.com. Okay, now let's say dir, now let's see if, okay, right here we can see now that before the value was zero, because we didn't type anything into it, and let's edit my file.txt, there you go, okay, and that's how it wrote twice. So that was a step-by-step -step process. Now let's go ahead and we'll say, what was it, f, I don't even know, man, writer.asm. Let's debug writer.asm and let's look at the mechanics of it and actually how it's going down. Unassemble it. Uh, what the hell am I looking at? Oh, not writer.asm. Let's let's dump the executable. Let's say debug writer.com or hmm, f. going on and we'll do a register by register look at it okay 
So here, I, I, I zeroed out the SI register. Okay, that's my instruction. Unit's SI doesn't have anything into it anyway, right? CX register always has O300 in it. This is that, okay? So let's execute that. You'll see that there is no change because it's, I moved more zeros in there. Now, why didn't I clear out the CX register? Well, like I said, I don't know if it's imperative for you to clear out the SI register. Matter of fact, I think it's something I just came up with. But I, the, intuitively, there's a good thing. It seems like it'd be something smart to do when you're going to move something into it. Okay, now with the CX register, why don't I do it with that? I might try it on the tutorial and see what happens, but I don't know. So we'll see here that our next instruction is to move into the 3D, or AH register 3D, the value of 3D. Let's execute that and see what happens. Okay, now step by step execution, we can see that the AH register now occupies 3D. Next one would be AL pop it in there. Okay. So that's moved into the AX register, or AL register, um, 0, 1, into the AH register. So AH register is kind of full right now. Now, let's do another, um, well, the next one is to move in our string, so watch the DX register, and that occupies 200. Okay. Now, the next instruction is in 21. Okay. Now, remember, we're going to watch this AX register. We're going to watch the contents of AX shift over to the SI register, okay? And this is the value. What happened was N21 did some magical genie forces, all right? And the handler got um, put into here when we executed that. The handler got put into here, but remember we moved that handler. The handler is now over here. This here still holds, does it actually still hold that? Or is it in virtual? I don't know, okay? But, obviously it can't be here because we moved it and the program works fine. And if it was here before, when we when we sent other stuff to it, it would have overwritten it and messed it up. Alright? So I think that these here, it's, uh, it is over here. And I don't know the proper wording to say about what it is here. But obviously, it, our handler is saved. But this is our handler. Okay, next one here is saying move into AH40, let's execute that, and you see the AH register, the high part has now the value of 40, uh, CL10, so watch your CL register, okay, and now 10 is in the low spot here, this here, I don't know why the 3 is there, and now we're going to move into the DX register, um, to 20, okay, and there you go. And then watch the BX register too as we move move our contents of the SI register into the BX register. Execute. Okay? And 05. Right? That signs a program. Everything blah blah blah. But that's how handlers work. They go from one place to another. You have to deal with them. You have to move them out of the way. Okay? And you cannot, you cannot um, leave them around. Because if you do, they will get overwritten too, unless you save them. All right, all right. So that's that. <clears throat> how come you're not showing us how to read from a file? <laughs> that's funny. So <laughs> I will show you how to read from a file. Maybe I could do it quickly. It's not really so much of of. Well, it is kind of. It is kind of. Uh, what I should do. It's it's not <clears throat> it's not that complicated. Okay. But um it's a little different. It's a little different. Now let me make let me say dir here. File make file write writer my file dot txt. Alright, so let's get rid of some source no let's keep the source code. Let's say edit um, reader dot asm. We'll set this up. RCX three hundred. Um, name it f, f read dot com and write and let's say quit. Okay. 
so first remember and before it was non-intuitive but now we can say it's kind of intuitive because we've done it before okay remember in order for us to read to a f uh, read from a file you have to do the opposite of write to a file all right and in order to read or write to a file you must open the file of course right right now we have to say um open um name or name of file all right that's that's very intuitive but see if you remember in the last one when we open a file we actually have to say what what um what do we want to do we want to open it in our last case it was to write to it now we want to open it to read to it so that's a, a little non-intuitive and we'll say open to read okay name of file okay and ugh, my back is killing me and that's how we want to do it and then we have to actually perform the, the, the function of reading right so, okay, to actually read the file. So we open, we open it. Now we have to read the file, and let's try that. So first, when we open the file, remember we got a handler. So first, let's go ahead. I like to go ahead and zero out my handler. Clear for. Now, we had to figure out what does the opcode to open a file. If you're using DOS like me, um, like I said, go to the Ralph Brown's interrupt list. As I said in a previous tutorial. And he'll have a ton of opcodes for you. But I know it as 3Delta. 3Delta is to open it. Um, open for reading purposes. We're going to move into the AL register. To open to read will be 0. Okay. And we had to move in the name of the file. And we'll move that into our DX register, and we'll put the address of 200 in. Okay. Um, let's say address 200. But the name of our file was I think it was my file.txt. My my file.txt. Okay. Now we open it to read. Um. Now this is standard in again because we're not actually reading it, we're opening it to read, okay? So we'll put a null terminator there, okay? Now let's say int 21 to execute the above, all right? Now we have our handler, we have everything where it wants to be. Um, let's move, let's move our handler, which would be in the SI register, or move, move our handler, which is in the AH <laughs> register to the SI handler. Now we actually have to read the file. And in order to read the file, we need to move in the opcode of AH3F. That actually does the, does the function of reading the file. Okay? And, um... Hmm. When you read a file... Don't say how many bytes to read from the file. It's gonna dump you out the whole file. Okay? So, let's say in 21 on that, <coughs> we moved our handler, and then we're actually reading the file. But where's the, where's the stuff going? Who knows? Alright? That's another non intuitive thing. You figure when you execute this, it may dump out on the screen. Not with this though, because now we have to actually say where we want to put the bytes. Okay? And maybe you do want to put the bytes on the screen, of course, but you have to make these bytes go on the screen. You're actually, <clears throat> like I said, you're actually, you're physically doing everything in the computer. Okay? And that's good to point out. So now, <clears throat> remember how we wrote our string. Our file, our stuff, we want to make it print to the screen, okay, it's going to come out 
as a string. So how do we how do we print strings on our screen? Zero nine move string. Okay. Um, move into the DX register, the memory address for where we want to put the strings. We'll put them at two twenty. Okay. Move or um, the bytes. The bytes. Okay. And then we can say int twenty one, int twenty, and that executes and kills it. Okay. Now <coughs> I'm just give it two handlers. I don't know. We have to move our handler that we got here. Okay. We move that into the SI register. Now we don't dump it out right away. Well, we do have to dump it out. Okay. But we got a handler here. We stocked it in here. But remember, we still have a handler located in here. So we're not going to be. Um, that's that's something we want to move to the BX register because if, if if that handler doesn't come back, then we never moved the file. Okay. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's go ahead and dump our handler back out. We moved it out of the way. Let's move it now into the um, from the SI register. Let's move it to the BX. Move BX and SI. Let's move. Let's move. I think I got that backwards. Let's move the contents of the SI register. Let's move it into the BX register. That's how we want to do that. Off the record, I really hate kids that are not mine. I don't know if anybody feels the same. But aren't they so loud and obnoxious and ill-mannered? <sighs> so I've got kids, and my kids have friends. Of course, everybody wants their kids to have friends, right? But why do they have to be so daggone obnoxious? <laughs> I'm the evil guy at the computer, just saying, yeah. So, we have to figure out a place to put our bytes, okay? We dump the handler back out from the SI register, because I don't like to go that, um, that route. I don't like to use that register to dump stuff. And my BX register is not doing anything right now. So why don't you just take these bytes BX register? Right? So that's what happens there, and that's what happens. And it's the same thing as far as printing strings go. Well, you're reading from a file. Okay? And you're printing strings to screen. Okay? That's basically the same thing. We have to tell the memory address um, what bytes you want to print out. Or actually, in this case, it's not only what bytes. The, the bytes that are that get printed out are actually told the whole file, but the memory address location of what where you want to dump them. Okay. And down here, um, we're going to dump out. Let me see. Zero 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 so we'll say debug reader .asm. Uh, no. We'll say debug. We'll debug reader .asm. Okay. Everything looks super. Looks super. Let's run it. Uh, what was it? Fread.com. Uh, what the hell happened? Clear. Fread.com. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> let's uh <laughs> let's look at our freader.com or uh f file make fread or asm file. Let's look at our asm file. fread Where the hell? Okay. This could be a little funky. F right we wrote file make we made our file reader.asm reader.asm is our source code we want to talk about. okay how come this got so crazy it's got so crazy 
We moved our handler. Um, well, we zeroed out the register, moved our handler in there, or we moved our stuff into there. Move into AL register, open to read. Um, the name of file. What was the name of the file? Could that have been wrong? No. Dir. Okay, my file.txt. Let's edit that and look at it. Let it my file.txt. Somehow we got something backwards. So it got written into it. Um let's say edit reader.asm. 3D open file. 3F is to read file. 3 A B C. I think it's to read file. You know what? I'm not sure. Play with it. I'm gonna play with my file and we'll see where we end up. Alright? But this is basically the function. You know what? Let's not do that. I hate to do that. Yes. Clear. Watch me fail. Fread.com and I got a whole bunch of oh, fread.asm or reader reader.asm no errors fread is the name of my file so let me run it fread.com okay I think that was a bad op code edit 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 uh f read or read.asm okay let's go back over here again and we'll say three uh, three foxtrot I think so exit yes I want to save it clear debug um, reader.asm no errors and we want to run fread.com No. Dir clear. Debug reader.asm. Let's edit reader.asm and see what happened. In 21, that took care of our stuff. That took care of our stuff. And this took care of this. Address 220, which were the bytes. One more time for failure. <laughs> let's say, let's say, um, our reader.asm is our source code. Debug reader, reader.asm. No errors. Now, fread is the name of our file. Let's run fread. Edit my file.txt. Okay. Let's move this stuff out of the way and see if this could have ever did anything wrong to us. And we'll say that. Now let's run debugger reader. right now. My notes seem to tell me different. And it could just be because I am running out of juice. Alright, so I'm going to figure this out. You try to figure it out. If you can't, hey, don't fret. Have it up in a day or two and maybe even right after this one. So, 
Have a great day. Exit. Peace out, DOS box. Say pseudo sue. These things happen from time to time. <laughs> It'll be a brief layover. Don't you worry. You guys have a great day. 60, 75.